Hi everyone, and welcome back to your Math 100 orientation lecture. So this is part two of our lecture video. Um, we're currently going to be focusing on the remaining sections from chapter zero. So I'm just gonna share my screen once again. Okay, great. And I'm gonna switch off my video so we can focus on the lecture notes. All right, so we're now continuing with section 0 0.7. And so that is linear equations. So firstly, what do we mean when we say equations? So what is an equation? All right, so an equation is basically um, an expression that involves a statement. So I'll just call it statement one. So some mathematical expression being equal to another mathematical expression, statement two. So of course, it's going to be an expression involving equality, hence equation. All right, so now we're focusing on linear equations. So the next question that arises is, what is a linear equation? All right, so let's define that. So a linear equation, in variable x, and I'm just specifying the variable that this is going to be with reference to. Okay, and so a linear equation, so I did not mean to say is, but rather in. Okay. So in variable x has the form y equals to ax plus b, okay? So there is an equality, there's an expression on the left and there's an expression on the right. So this is an equation, but now we're being specific about what linear means, all right? And so now it's of the form y equals to ax plus b, where a and b are constants, And I'm going to specify that A does not equal to zero. So just like in the case when we presented the definition about a polynomial, remember we require that the coefficient of the highest, uh, sorry, the coefficient of X with the highest power was also required to not be zero. And again, here we require that the coefficient of X, in this case, A, must not be zero. If it is zero, then observe that it's zero times X. And so that term disappears. And so, I mean, that would then make that y equals to some constant, and that's not what we want to study. We want to study an equation of the form y equals to ax plus b, where this a is non-zero. Okay. And so what's the key point in here about this being a linear equation is the fact that x is raised to the power one. So it was not, it might not have been written there, but of course, when the exponent is not specified, we take that as being as, as an exponent equal to one. So here, exponent equal to one makes this equation linear. If, for example, the exponent here, the power of x was not one, let's say it was two, then that is a nonlinear equation. And in particular, um, we would then call that a quadratic equation. If it was to the power three, we would call that a cubic equation, etc. So I hope that the point there has been made and comes across um, as intended to. So the main idea here is that x to the power one is specifying that this equation is linear. And so we could also say that this is a linear equation. and has degree one. All right, oh, I did not write one, so that's what I'm going to write. Okay, so now that we understand what an equation is and what makes it linear, um, we're going to also be interested in manipulating equations. So multiplying by terms, dividing, uh, subtracting, and we need to understand under what conditions are we allowed to do that. So I'm just going to 
to be a remark. Okay, let's just move down. All right, so the first thing that's important for us to know is when are two equations equivalent, right? So two equations are equivalent if they have the same solutions. Right, so that's an important remark. Right, the next thing that I'd like to point out is that in order to maintain equivalence, spelling, right, so we're talking about equivalence of an equation. Whatever you would do on the left-hand side of the, of the equality, you would have to then do on the right-hand side, right? So you apply the same operations on both sides. Okay. And so, so what do I mean when I, when I say that, right? So one point would be the following. Um, whatever you add, or alternatively, if I replace that with the word subtract on the left, you must then do on the right. Okay, and similarly, whatever you do on the right, you then do on the left. So essentially, you treat both sides with equality, okay? So we're gonna do whatever we do on the right, sorry, on the left, do we do on the right? So that was with regards to addition and subtraction. And similarly, um, Whatever you multiply or divide on the left, you do on the right and vice versa. And what's important here when multiplying and dividing is to ensure that the expression is not zero, all right? So I'll make a note that, a note of that, that expression is non-zero. Remember, we cannot divide by zero, and if we're gonna be multiplying both sides by zero, then we're gonna end up with both sides equaling to zero. All right, so the point here, is whatever you do on the left, you do on the right, and vice versa, whether it's addition, subtraction, and that maintains the, the value of um, the equation, all right, that you are working with. But that is something that you have been exposed to in school. All right, so let's solve the following linear equation. So firstly, is it an equation? Yes, there's an equality with a statement on the left and a statement on the right. Is it linear? What is the highest power? of uh, the variable x in each of these terms, they're both one. All right, so we're definitely working with a linear equation. All right, so we want to solve it, which means we want to solve for the variable x. So the question is now, how do we go about doing that? All right, so firstly, by looking at this equation, I observe that we have um, fractions in it, right? And in order for me to solve for the x, I would ideally want to get rid of these fractions. Right, so how would one propose that we get rid of it? So in order to get rid of the fractions, the idea would be to then multiply by a number that removes the, uh, the value from the denominator. 
I notice that the highest power in the denominator between the two fractions is four. So in order to remove uh, these terms from the bottom, we would have to multiply by four. But based on what we just said on the pre, sorry, just above, a few lines above, whatever you do to the left, you must do to the right, or whatever you do to the right, you must do to the left. So if I now decide that I want to multiply the left-hand side by four, then I must also multiply the right-hand side by four. So I'm now taking four being multiplied into seven X plus three over two minus nine X minus eight over four, and that's four times six. All right, so simplifying, I see that these will cancel. I'll be left with two being multiplied to seven X plus three. Right, and here that four cancels with that there and I'm left with minus nine X minus eight. Observe that I'm keeping the brackets in here because I still need to be very respectful about that negative, right? So that negative is now going to distribute into each of those terms. And then on the right-hand side, I'm now left with four times six, which is 24. All right. Um, so now I need to simplify and I need to solve for X. So I'm now gonna distribute the two into this bracket. So two times seven X is 14 X. Right. Two times um, three is positive six minus nine X plus eight. So I'm distributing that minus in there equals to 24. And so I now get 14 X minus nine X, which gives me five X. And then I've got six plus eight, which is 14 equals to 24. And therefore five X equals two. So what I'm gonna do now is it's essentially like taking this 14 onto the right-hand side or subtracting 14 from both sides. Okay, so that's 24 minus 14. And therefore I'm left with 10. And therefore X is equal to, so in order to solve for X, I divide both sides by five and therefore X is equal to two. And so that is the solution to this linear equation. Okay, so the next thing. So we're still talking about equations. So now we're talking about a different type and we're gonna focus on a literal equation. So what is a literal equation? So a literal equation, so here I'm just using shorthand instead of writing out equation in full. So this is an equation. So we already understand what an equation is. All right, in which certain terms or in particular, in this case, certain constants are not specified. Okay, and so when these things are not specified, they're usually denoted by some alphabets, right? So, and are denoted. by alphabets, A, B, C. Okay, right, so an equation involving constants that are not specified and are denoted in the following way, uh, then we would call that equation a literal equation. Right, so in our previous example, we did not have any unspecified constants, as you can see. Right, so all of the constants were clearly stated in this question. So this was not a literal equation. So what is an example of a literal equation? All right, so here is an example of a literal equation. It's clear that these were meant to be constants. X, sorry, AC were meant to be constants, but they were not specified. And now they've been denoted by these alphabets. So we'll make a note here, um, the literals, so here, A and C are called literal constants. 
Okay, and so this is an example of a literal equation. And so now we want to solve it. And the strategy is the same. Whatever you do on the left, you do on the right and vice versa. Remember, we're gonna be solving for the variable and the variable in here is the X, all right? So firstly, let's take a look at what we have. In order to solve for X, we would like to write this equation out in a simpler way, right? And in order for me to write it out in a simpler way, the first step I would take here on the left-hand side is to distribute the x into that bracket, right? So I'm then left with a times x plus c times x. And then I can't do anything with this term, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. So it stays as x squared. But looking at the right-hand side of this equality, I've now got a binomial, and so I can square it. Right? So squaring this binomial, we square the first term, I get x squared. I square the last term, I get a squared, and then I multiply and I double. So it's 2ax. Okay, so things are starting to, to come along. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to group the variables on one side and the remaining terms on the other. But so anything that has an x in it will now be moved onto the left hand side and we'll try and simplify it as much as possible. But first off, notice that x squared is on both sides, right? So they, that ideally cancels off if you just subtract minus x squared or add, uh, sorry, add minus x squared to both sides, right? So that's gone. And the only other term that I would now like to take onto uh, the left-hand side would be the, to a x, right? So here's something that contains an x in it. And so I need to take it onto the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side, I'm left with cx. And then I've got ax, and then I've got 2ax, which I'm pulling onto the left. So ax minus 2ax gives me uh, minus ax. All right. And then what's left on the right hand side is just a squared. So that is what we have. Now looking at the left, there's a common, um, there's a common uh, factor that I can pull out. So I can pull out the x and then I'm left with c minus a. And remember x is what I wanted to solve for. So now I can divide both sides by c minus a. And therefore this tells me that x equals to a squared divided by c minus a. And of course we now have to be very careful about the solution right, with these literal constants. So we have to say something a bit more rather than just stop here, because we know that we cannot divide by zero. And so what's very important for us to now state is that C minus A cannot be zero, which implies that C should never equal to A. All right, and so that is how you would end off that solution. All right, so we just discussed linear equations. We then went on to discuss um, literal equations. And now I'm going to talk about fractional equations. So what is a fractional equation? So a fractional equation again is an equation, right, based on our understanding of it, in which a variable in the denominator and see so we're being very specific so i mean if we're mentioning denominator that in itself tells you that there's definitely a fraction right all right and now we're seeing that there is a variable in the denominator that is not specified Well, I'll just say that is not specific. All right, and so here is an example of a fractional equation. All right, so this is it. All right, so meaning there is definitely a variable in the denominator um, of, the, of this equation. And it's not specified in the sense that we now have to solve for it. It's in the denominator. And in order to find out about it, we have to solve. So this is a fractional equation. All right, so the next step now is to solve. 
So how would we solve for this? Again, like before, when we encountered fractions in the equation, the idea was to get rid of what was in the denominator. So the approach to how do you get rid of what's in the denominator would be to multiply uh, by what is in the denominator. So in order to get rid of x minus four, that means I have to multiply both sides by x minus four. But looking at the right, I also need to get rid of x minus three. So that means I also need to multiply both sides by x minus three. So based on what I have just said, that means I now need to multiply both sides by x minus four and x minus three, right? So that's where we have to be careful, right? So now I'm gonna write it down. So we're multiplying by x minus four on the left and x minus three on the left. And then I'm doing the same on the right, x minus four and x minus three. And then of course the term that was on the left, which is five over x minus four and the term that's on the right, which is six over x minus three. Okay, so now observe what happens when we multiply both sides by these terms. So this x minus four is gonna cancel with that x minus four. This x minus three cancels with that x minus three. So now what am I left with, All right? So we're now left with x minus three being multiplied to five on the left. So let me write that down. That's the same as saying five is being multiplied into x minus three. And on the right, we've got that six is being multiplied into x minus four. So I can now simplify that, distribute the five into the brackets. So I've, I'm now left with, I'll start here. So it's five x minus 15. Okay, so I've distributed the 5 into each of those terms, and on the right, it's 6x minus 6 times 4, which is 24. And then again, group your terms. Take the terms involving x onto the left and take the constants of all other terms onto the right. So that means I've got 5x minus 6x, and so that leaves me with minus x. And then here I've got minus 24 and I'm gonna add 15 to it, okay? So that gives me a value of minus nine. So that means X equals to positive nine if I multiply both sides by minus one. And so the answer that we were looking for is minus nine. So just to point out before we move on, if you want to double check if your answer is indeed correct, then all you have to do is substitute your X value onto the left and substitute it onto the right and check if the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side. If it doesn't, then it means your answer is wrong. Similarly, in this case, substitute your answer on the left and the right and check if whatever's, whatever you get on the left equals to whatever you get on the right. And similarly for this, for this problem here. All right, so the next type of equation that we now want to talk about is a radical equation. So what is a radical equation? So we've already encountered radical before, and I'd mentioned to you that radicals are um, essentially things involving roots, right? So roots to, to, to any power, uh, often sometimes referred to as thirds, right? So what is a radical equation? So a radical equation is an equation in which an unknown, so the variable that you have to solve for, occurs in, inside a radical expression. Okay, and so that's important. And so let's look at the example that we have here. So this is clearly an equation that involves radicals. So there are radical terms on the left-hand side. And the unknown that we are solving for is y, and it's clearly inside the radical. So this is a radical equation. So now we want to solve for this. So the question is solve for y. How are we going to do that? All right, so what is the, the strategy that we, we could employ in here? So the trick in this case, is to place a radical on either side of the equality. 
Okay, especially in the case where you have two like us. Okay, so you put it on either side of the equal T. So instead of writing equality, I'm just putting a sign. And then once you've done that, the next step would then be to square both sides, because remember, it's the square root and you're squaring both sides, then you are essentially getting rid of the radical expression. Similarly, if, it, if you had um, the third root, right? So, uh, so the cubic root, and then you cube both sides, then again, you'd be getting rid of that radical. So in this case, we are going to square both sides. All right, so let's follow the strategy that I've mentioned. Okay, so we're gonna take one radical expression onto the right-hand side, right? So ideally, this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take this there. And therefore, I will be left with the square root of y minus three being equal to, so this negative root y will become positive root y minus three. So I've done step one, step two is to square both sides. And so now if I'm going to square both sides, that means this is what I'm doing. And so now what do I get? So when I square the square root, I'm just going to be left with whatever's inside the square root and that's y minus three. But when I do the same on the right hand side, notice what do we have? We're now squaring. Um, um, so it's kind of like squaring a binomial, but this is another binomial. So what do you do though? You square the first term, you square the second term. So let's square it. So if I square the first term, I'm just gonna be left with y. If I square the second term, I'm, that's uh, minus three squared, which is positive nine. Then I multiply the two and I double it. Right, so that gives me minus three y times two, which becomes minus, sorry, minus three times root y times two becomes minus six times root y. And so this is what we now get on the right hand side. And now look at what we, we have in here, right? Uh, let me just check. Okay, perfect. Right, so, so let's now simplify. So firstly, observe that that's gonna fall away. Isn't that so? And now again, the idea here is that we're solving for y, right? So I'm gonna take the, the expressions containing y onto the left-hand side and keep the constants on the right. So if I have to do that, then this is gonna come onto the left and that's gonna go onto the right. So what do, we, what do I end up with when I do that? So I then get positive, six times root y on the left. And when I take the negative three onto the right, it becomes positive three. And so it's nine plus, plus three, which gives me 12, okay? Then following from this here, we see that square root y then equals to 12 divided by six, if I had to divide both sides by six. And 12 divided by six is two. And now finally, in order to get out a value for y, I had to square both sides. I would then observe um, that y equals to four. And so that is the solution we were looking for. All right. Now, finally, moving on. So now we come to the last section that we're meant to cover, and that is the section on quadratic equations. All right, so you have encountered quadratic equations before. So what is a quadratic equation? It's an equation that's going to involve a quadratic expression, right? So a quadratic, a quadratic equation in the variable x is an expression of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero 
And here we can now specify what A, B, and C should be. All right, so where A, B, and C are constants. So they are essentially literal, right? They are the literal constants. And like we have done before, one more thing to specify would be that A should not be zero, right? Very important. So let's look at an example. Solve the following, x squared plus x minus 12 equals to zero. This is a quadratic equation, right? It's quadratic because the highest power of the variable x here um, is two, and therefore we call this a quadratic equation. Observe the difference between a linear equation and a quadratic equation, right? So linear equation um, involved the variable x having a highest power of one, and here right now, the variable x has a highest power of two, and of course, satisfying that the coefficient of x squared is non zero, all right? So this example here is indeed a quadratic equation. And so, so now we need to solve for it. So we're solving for x, right? So how do we do that? So what have we learned thus far? We've learned factorization, all right? So the idea here would then be to factorize. So how do we factorize this expression on the left? Right, so remember, look at um, the constant term and find its factors. Right, so the factors that I think would work in here are three and four. Remember, we need to, to ensure that when we add them together, we get that positive one. So I'm going to take x plus four, multiply to x minus three, and let's check. So what is four minus three? It's definitely positive one. And then what is four multiplied to negative three? It's negative 12. So these candidates definitely work. And then from here, remember, we're solving for x. Now look at what's written here. Technically, what's happened is that this is one term and this is another term. So it's like a times b and it's equal to zero. So whenever you have two things being multiplied that's equal to zero, this then implies that either a is equal to zero or either b is equal to zero. And so that's the logical um, reasoning that we are going to be using now. So we have that either the first bracket is equal to zero or the second bracket is equal to zero, right? So we have x plus four equals to zero or x minus three equals to zero. And then now what does this mean? This then means that x equals to negative four or x equals to positive three. And so that's how we would solve that. Let's look at another one. All right, looks a little bit more complicated. We've got x being multiplied into this squared bracket, multiplied to x plus five, and then we're being added to x into x plus two cubed equal to zero. Okay, so in this sense, this might not even be a quadratic equation. And why is that the case? I mean, because we've got x's being multiplied uh, <laughs> in into much higher powers in here, okay? All right, and so um, whilst this might not even be a quadratic equation, the same strategies of solving would apply, okay? So I'll just put an asterisk in here, and this is something that you can just make a note of. All right, so, so let's think about how should we approach solving this? So just observe what's actually written here. Is there anything common that we could factor out? Well, I observe that x is definitely common. And then I also observe that x plus two is common again, All right? So that means I could perhaps factor this out. So let's factor that out, right? So I'm gonna pull out x and then I'm gonna pull out x plus two. So is that the highest power of x plus two that I can pull out? This one's squared and that one's cubed, which means I can pull out the squared. Right? And so if I did that, what am I left with in the first term? I've taken out the x, and I've taken out the x plus two squared. So I'm now left with x plus five, right? And in the second term, I've taken out the x, and I've taken out x plus two squared. So I'm just left with x plus two equals to zero. And so now we can simplify it. So I'm just gonna leave this factor unchanged. 
but I'm going to simplify whatever's in the square bracket. All right, so this is x plus x, so that's 2x. And this is positive 5 plus 2, which gives me um, positive 7. And so now look at what we have. So maybe I could change the square bracket. Um, so I'll just use rounds. So we now have x being multiplied to that, and this is being multiplied to that. And so now we have the product of three things equals to zero. The logic that I have used above, that whenever a, you have two terms being multiplied and uh, sorry, multiplied, which is then equal to zero, we can then conclude that either of them um, uh, could be zero, well, at least one. Then that applies here as well. We now have three terms, and again, at least uh, one of them should be zero. Yeah. So that then implies that we can conclude that the first term x equals to zero, or the second term x plus two squared equals to zero, or the third term two x plus seven equals to zero. Okay. And so again, I mean, this one's unchanged, it's x equals to zero. But we can simplify this one. This is telling me that x plus 2 into x plus 2 equals to 0, which then from here I can then conclude that this means that x equals to minus 2, because in both cases they would be equal to 0. x plus 2 would be equal to 0, which means that x equals to minus 2. And in the last case, uh, this would then imply that x equals to minus 7 over 2 if you have to simplify or solve for x. So x equals to zero, or x equals to two, or x equals to minus seven over two. So again, very similar approach, even though this was not a quadratic equation, uh, the idea of choosing this example was that it demonstrates to you that you can still work with higher powers of x and still solve for x in this case. Right, so now what happens if you're actually faced with a quadratic um, equation, but it's very difficult for you to solve for the, for the value of the variable. Right, so then in this case, right, we have the quadratic formula. And again, you've learned the quadratic formula from the time you were in grade 10. So you had learned that the roots of the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero is given by x equals to minus b squared plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, all right? So a very familiar formula, something that I feel you guys should be experts at by now. And so let's see how we could apply it in, in one particular scenario. So here the question says solve. 2 plus 6 root 2 times y plus 9y squared equals to 0. All right, so what you'd have to figure out in here is what should be a, b, and c from the quadratic formula equal to. So we know there's a, b, and c, and we know the a is the coefficient of the x squared, the b is the coefficient of the x, and the c is the constant. So right now we're working with a quadratic equation in the variable y. So don't get confused just because the variable is now different. The principle is the same, okay? So here, the a that we are looking for, right, is then going to be the coefficient of the y squared, right? So that's a, so that's positive nine, okay? The b that we are looking for is going to be the coefficient of the y. And so that's six root two. And the C is the constant, right? So that's just two. 
And so, of course, in order to solve for y, we then have that y would then be equal to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And so putting all this information in, that says it's minus 6 root 2 plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 into a, which is 9, into c, which is 2, so that's all under the root sign, divided by 2 times a, right, and 2 times a is 2 times 9. But you could then put this into your calculator, and you would get out two possible answers, right? So I will leave that for you to do as an exercise. Okay, so the next thing that we're now going to be focusing on is a quadratic form equation. So, so what is this, right? That's the next thing. Right, so a quadratic, I'm just using shorthand, form equation. Again, it's going to be an equation, but in this case is not a quadratic equation. So it's a quadratic form, but it's not immediately quadratic, right? So it's not a quadratic equation. However, it can be transformed into one. So it can be transformed into a quadratic equation. So again, I'm just using shorthand, so please don't get confused. That's quadratic equation. And we do this by using substitution. So this is actually quite an important definition. What this is actually allowing us to do is to take a seemingly complicated equation, and then by using a substitution, we simplify the situation such that the complicated equation becomes a quadratic equation, and then we can use our quadratic tools or formula to get the answer, all right? And, and that's actually quite a nice thing. So let's take a look at an example. Solve the following. One over x to the power six plus nine over x cubed plus eight equals to zero. I mean, looking at this, this is clearly not a quadratic equation, right? Um, it's a fractional equation, um, but it's not linear. The highest power of the variable in, in this case is, um, well, it's, it's a negative integer, all right? But in any case, this is what we're faced with. It doesn't look quadratic, but it's actually of quadratic form. So the question is, can I replace um, these non-constant terms? So can I replace this one and this one by some type of substitution such that I end up with something in quadratic form? So observe, so this, maybe this is not apparent to you right now, but with practice, you would be able to do this efficiently, okay? So let's, um, suggest the following. So I'm going to offer a substitution, okay? So we will let y equals to 1 over x cubed. And this is the substitution that I'm suggesting. So if y equals to 1 over x cubed, then observe that this now becomes y squared, okay? Right? But okay, before I, I get there, let me take it step by step. So then if I want to express everything in terms of one over x cubed, then observe that this is one over x cubed squared. So whenever you square a fraction, that square gets applied to the numerator and the denominator. And so when this square is being applied to the denominator, it becomes two times three, which means we get x to the power six, okay? And then looking at the next term, this is just, nine, 
into one over x to the power three plus eight equals zero. And so now, based on the fact that we are letting y equals to one over x cubed, we now get that this is y squared plus nine y plus eight. And now look at this equation. This is exactly, so one moment. My apologies. All right, so I'm back. All right, so this is exactly a quadratic equation, right? In the variable y. So we've got y squared plus 9y plus 8 equals to 0. Okay, and so how do we solve it? We factorize, right? So if I'm going to factorize, I'm going to get two terms. And so what are the factors of 8 that I could use to give me back positive 9? So I'm going to use 8 and 1. Right, so I'm going to use positive 8 and positive 1. So 8 plus 1 gives me 9, and 8 times 1 gives me 8. So this is indeed working out as a factorization. Right, and then based on what we learned, this then implies that y plus 8 equals to 0, which implies that y equals to minus 8, or y plus 1 equals to 0, which implies that y equals to minus 1. Okay, but then what is y? Remember, the whole point was to solve the original equation, which is an equation in terms of x. So I need the answers for x, not y. What is y? y is equal to one over x cubed. So this means one over x cubed equals to minus eight. Okay, and one over x cubed equals to minus one. So then this now tells me that x cubed equals to negative one over eight, okay? By manipulating both sides of the equation or x cubed equals again to minus one. All right, and so we want x. So in order to obtain x, we then see that x is equal to negative uh -huh, by taking the, the cube root on both sides or x equals to negative one. And so that is how we actually go about solving a seemingly complicated problem by reducing it to a quadratic equation. So the original was quadratic form and the transformed equation was now um, a, an actual quadratic equation in variable y. And so this is how we were able to solve it. All right, so this essentially brings us to the end of section 0.8. And that also means that this brings us to the end of our orientation, All right? So I invite you to, to please reach out to me if you're encountering any difficulties. You have my email address and I wish you all the best and I look forward to interacting with you at our first lecture in week two of March. Okay, so all the best.